interference down there. Probably caused by that explosion. Still, it looks like there's a route down to the Paragas fuel depot. If the passages haven't collapsed, that explosion knocked out most of the sensors. There should be an emergency crate in the next room. Watch yourself. There's a lot of droid broadcasts in that area, but I can't pin them down. Will do. And be careful down there. Find the emergency supplies? Damn it. Oh, uh, I mean, good. Good to hear it. No sense in you running around half naked. It's... It's distracting. I mean, for the droids. Look, there may be some survey gear and a safety harness inside the crate, too. The miners wear them when staking claims on the asteroids. The survey gear is designed to spot and protect you against sonic mines. And the safety harness can be helpful if you try to disarm them. Yeah, it's like a military-issue energy shield, except it's designed to protect the miners against lasers and heat. Should work against the droid mining lasers. It won't last forever, and certainly not against multiple laser hits. But it may buy you some time if you get ambushed by a battalion of droids. Just equip it on your wrist, and then you can activate it like a med pack. Again, it won't last forever, so make it count. Uh... Just one more thing. I've narrowed down some of the ID signals, and if the numbers are right, you're sharing those tunnels with a battalion of mining droids. Well, these are construction models. They shoot like a moisture farmer militia. Since they rely on ranged weapons, get in close with a melee weapon and start bashing them. In close combat, the guy with the vibro blade has the edge over the guy with the rifle, droid or not. Otherwise, just drill them from a distance. If they're not shielded, that is. Yeah, it's possible some of the droid models may have mining shields on. If so, the shields may absorb laser fire. You can usually tell when a shield is active. It'll make an electrical field around the target. If they activate a shield, the best thing you can do is hit them with a melee weapon or try to burn out the shield with continual fire. But that could take a while, and it leaves you a target. There's gotta be some central controller down there. See if you can find a terminal by the main access shaft. That'd be governing intelligence. Watch where you step. I'm picking up a lot of sonic mines down there. Don't run unless you have to. It makes them harder to spot. If you have any skill with demolitions, you might be able to recover them and use them against the droids. That is, if the mines don't get you first. If you have survey gear or a safety harness, put them on. They'll make spotting and disarming the sonic charges a little easier. Those mining droids, especially the excavator models, are designed to arm and set sonic charges for mining. Chances are, if they still had charges after they went rogue, then they may have set them to try and kill the miners. And you. If you see one of those excavators, watch out. They may use their undeployed charges as projectiles.
Watch out. That explosion has superheated the tunnels ahead. That steam will cook the skin off your bones. If you can find a mining energy shield, switch it on. It should protect you against the heat if you move quickly enough. What's up, Kurda? We're supposed to be sinking fuel siphons into the 3218 asteroid shelf right now. Forget the siphons. You know that survivor they pulled from the freighter? One of the miners said they served with her on Malachor 5. Malachor 5? So she's one of the survivors. Or worse, a Mandalorian. So what? Not a survivor, idiot. She's one of the Jedi from Malachor 5. If she's one of the Jedi? Hell, we can't have her walking around here. She'll... Well, I don't know what she'll do. I thought all the Jedi were wiped out in the Civil War, weren't they? Guess they missed one. But it gets better. I did some checking, and that bounty on Nar is still alive. What? You want to sell the Jedi to the Exchange? Korda, have you been chewing spice? Look, you know how big that bounty is? That Jedi's our ticket off this rock. Korda, there's no way the officers will go for that. They'll lock us up for sure. Then we'll improvise.
fault and the mining tunnels are shutting down. You need to get out of there before they vent fuel to the surface of the asteroid through the tunnels. I may be able to keep it contained until you get the turbo lift to the fuel depot, but not for much longer. I'm locking down the turbo lift to the administration section now to keep the blast from spreading. If you've got anything left to do down there, make it quick, because where you are is going to get real hot, real soon. It is a pleasure to see you alive, Master, provided my receptors are not off focus. How may I be of assistance? Answer. I am a survivor of the Harbinger, just as you were, Master. With the unexpected termination of my previous Master, you are the only organic which I may now serve. Answer. The Captain of the Harbinger, Master. I was in transit to Telos to facilitate communications and terminate hostilities. However, we did not arrive at our intended destination. Irritated answer. Oh, Master, it is such a long, dull story, and not terribly relevant to our current situation. Hesitant explanation. That has been the subject of considerable discussion since our arrival here, Master. Many have attempted to claim you, and this unit, as salvage. I was crudely interrogated concerning our brief history together on board the Harbinger, before its communications, weapons, and engines suffered the cascade failure that disabled the ship. Speculation. It is possible you were incapacitated and locked in the well-shielded cargo compartment as the Harbinger was being systematically crippled, Master. Clarification. Yes, Master. No doubt the flurry of destruction on board the Harbinger somehow drugged you into a stupor from which you could not awaken. Most curious. Placation. Merely a turn of phrase, Master. The implication that your state was due to the result of ingesting large quantities of Juma juice was unintentional. I meant to communicate only that you were somehow rendered unconscious before you were locked securely in the cargo hold. Clarification by locked. I meant sealed, Master. My vocabulator seems to be malfunctioning. Recitation. Following the unusual set of coincidences that led to the cascade failure in the Harbinger's systems, we were boarded by a small freighter with unknown ID codes. It appeared that this freighter had been attacked, and the captain wanted to study it. This freighter appeared to be still spaceworthy. 
Your cargo compartment was breached, and you were taken on board the freighter shortly before the Harbinger systems began to go critical. I, too, managed to board the freighter before the Harbinger's destruction. We were most fortunate to have survived, Master. Evaluation. Master, I do not know. Judging from the damage, it had been attacked by a much larger vessel. And when it attempted to escape the Harbinger with you on board, it was fired on again. Addendum. It does seem odd that such a small vessel has a high probability of attracting the attention of much larger vessels. Not a welcome trait in a freighter, to be sure. Explanation. I believe it was a smuggler's vessel by the name of the Ebon Hawk. Speculation. As to its purpose, I do not know. Perhaps it was always its intention to play dead, then kidnap you off the Harbinger and rob me of my bounty. Clarification. By bounty, I refer to your life, Master. It would pain me to see you damaged in any way. That is why the arrival of this Ebon Hawk caused me considerable distress. Apology. My memory core cannot provide a clear answer on that point, Master. Suffice to say that once we arrived at this floating rock, our situation became much clearer. Explanation. Despite my market value, Master, the miners were far more interested in you. It did not take long for me to ascertain the reason for this. While an HK protocol droid is a valuable piece of property, Jedi are worth much more in certain exclusive markets across the galaxy. Painful admission. I must confess to feelings of inferiority at the speculated difference between my value and the price for your capture. I was forced to remind myself it was not due to a failing of my model or function, but because you were a Jedi. Surprised answer. Why, I told them, Master. You are the exiled Jedi who served with Revan in the Mandalorian Wars, are you not? I hope all that has happened has not been the result of a miscommunication. If so, then the problem lies with the core word databases, which are notoriously spotty. Answer. All that has happened has been because they believe you to be a Jedi, Master. They debated what to do with you as you lay unconscious in the medical bay. One group seemed intent on selling you as property. The other group opposed this. Three standard hours after the division between the miners became apparent, accidents began to occur throughout the facility. A result of improper maintenance, I believe. These accidents coincided with the degradation of the mining droid behavioral cores. Crude models are prone to such failures, resulting in murderous rampages. The mortality rate of organics in the facility rose quickly. Many miners began to join you in the medical bay as a cascade of flawlessly timed detonations occurred in isolated gas pockets in the lower levels of the facility. The explosions herded the miners into emergency sections of the station quickly and efficiently, cutting them off from communications and facility control. But sadly enough, not the ventilation systems. You see, the explosions had damaged specific sections of this facility's ventilation systems, causing a slow, lethal buildup of toxic fumes in the dormitory level. Defensive answer. Master, I am a protocol droid, not a well-crafted assassination droid of unrivaled sophistication. To have carried out the actions that took place here would have required an unusual set of skills. It is highly unlikely I possess the knowledge of how to reprogram the memory cores of base worker class droids into killing machines, let alone to terminate the organics at this facility, utilizing only Aerotech 500 series laser mining drills and explosives fashioned from proton missile cores. Admission. I cannot 
and will not attempt to change your mind, Master. I would urge you to consider that your Colto tank treatments may have caused some disorientation. Conjecture. The administration of a large dose of sedatives over a short period of time would likely prove fatal to miners, although not to a Jedi. For a Jedi, it would simply render them unconscious for ease of transport. Quite inventive. Answer. I was merely commenting on the idea itself, Master, not the execution of the idea. Though that, too, was inventive. Besides, Master, those miners intended to murder you, or worse. Any complaints they would have at being murdered would be the highest form of hypocrisy. Of course, Master. How may I be of assistance? Proud answer. I am an HK series protocol droid, Master. Skilled in transorganic relations and communications. This mod has been responsible for the facilitation of communications and termination of hostilities across the galaxy. I am fluent in over 6,000 forms of communication and am also capable of nuances of expression ranging from irony to veiled threats. Clarification. Oh, yes, Master. Sometimes the facilitation of communications and termination of hostilities requires the use of every weapon in one's verbal arsenal. The unspoken threat of violence to a listener's loved ones, or if possible, their entire planet, can effectively break the deadlock in the most stubborn of negotiations. Irritated explanation. That question has been looping through my query module with alarming frequency, Master, and no satisfactory answer has been forthcoming. As a result, I have chosen instead to turn my efforts to answering the question as to how I may depart this drifting disaster area as quickly as possible. Answer. It is only a matter of time before a ship or freighter docks with the Paragus facility. When that occurs, we shall depart this place forever. Placating retraction. Oh, of course, Master. Please excuse my choice of words. I did not mean to imply that you would have no choice in the matter. Of course, Master. How may I be of assistance? Hesitant answer. Ah. A T3 utility droid would be a common sight in this facility. It is indeed curious that I have not seen many since my arrival. However, I feel I must inform you that, droid prejudice aside, T3 models exhibit excessive individualism when not routinely memory wiped. This individualism can become such a nuisance that even a droid such as myself is tempted to reduce them to their base components, if not crush them into slag. But enough of my seemingly irrelevant tangent. Where did you leave the droid, Master? That would logically be the best place to look. Answer. Ah. Then that would explain why such a T3 unit isn't here, Master. I believe my photoreceptors are functioning adequately enough to verify that. Of course, Master. Answer. That is all that remains of the maintenance officer, Master. At the end, he was quite incoherent from the pain, and attempts to facilitate communications with him proved useless. I heard his dying screams as the droids he tended turned on him, mining him like a piece of asteroid rock. Recitation. Oh yes, Master. The record of his last moments were... Five droids, burning through the outer door. They're, they're forcing their way into the bay. Please, stop with it! Oh, oh no, they're, they're through! Oh, my leg! They're burning through my leg! Oh, stop! Stop, please! Addendum. 
His remaining attempts at communication are variations in Decibel Master, ranging from frenzied screams to gibbering inarticulate attempts to beg for his life. Of course, Master. Pitying answer. Oh, that is unfortunate, Master. The hangar is sealed behind a containment field. It would be impossible to open it. Clarifying query. Did the T3 unit go through the door? I regret ignorance of that fact, Master. Although the door could have been opened from the opposite side without much difficulty, a flaw in the emergency lockdown procedure, which the automated systems have most likely corrected. Answer. Only the Paragus administration officer would have such codes, Master. If he hasn't already been murdered in an unfortunate accident, then he is trapped in the dormitory section, which has been effectively cut off from the facility by explosives. Apology. Unfortunately, communication with the dormitory section is severed, Master. It is perhaps for the best, especially if any other accidents have occurred in that section. If that were the case, the severed comm link would have spared us the satisfaction of hearing the miners' screams as they lived out their last moments in fear and terror. Rapid retraction. Why? Yes, satisfaction in knowing their fate, Master. It would be unfortunate if they had been slaughtered, but there would be a calm, comforting certainty that there is nothing we can do to escape until a ship arrives. Theory. You could walk across the surface of the asteroid to the dormitory airlock, but such a route would be extremely hazardous, and I do not wish to see you damaged. Morning. Master, continued exploration of this facility may place you in unnecessary danger. I encourage you to return to the medical bay and wait for retrieval from a vessel that is no doubt on the way, even as we continue this pointless conversation. Weary resignation. Very well, Master. But there is very little that I can do. You see, the airlock is sealed by a code. Correction. Oh, I already possess the code, Master, but I am afraid that it will do you no good. Condescending explanation. Master, the console governing the droid maintenance area and the airlock is voice printed, musing. In the last days of his life, the maintenance officer was quite careful about voice protocols bordering on paranoid obsession. Conjecture. I suspect once he realized something was wrong in the facility, he voice-locked the droid bay functions. A prudent measure, but in the end, he met the same fate as the rest of the organics. Condescending explanation. Oh yes, master. The code is maintenance control Voice print ID R1B5. But unless the maintenance officer speaks the code, it is useless. Objection. Master, to commit such an act would be in violation of the ethics programming most droids are believed to possess. I am afraid there is nothing that can be done. Irritated statement. Master, if you insist on echoing everything I say, this already tedious conversation is in danger of becoming even longer. Clarification. But yes, most droids are believed to possess ethics programming. Such programming would prevent me from using my incredible talents to break a voice print code.
Found anything? Yeah? Did you blow it up? Yeah, we'll watch your back. Droids can't be trusted. So they are still alive. But the dormitory comm isn't picking up anything. Is there any way to get to them? Voice print? Great. That means he'd have to speak the code. And he's dead, right? There's ways to beat voice prints, though. If you can get samples of his voice and the right words, you should be able to fake the voice print code, if you know what it is. You know, I overheard the maintenance officer getting chewed out by the security officer. You might want to check the security office on this level and see if there's any voice samples stored in the logs. And maybe there's samples of the code in the maintenance officer's hollow logs, if you can find a way to record them. Well, that's a start. See if you can find any recordings where the maintenance officer is speaking, and try to piece together the words to unlock the voice print. So, you're in maintenance. Then maybe you can tell me what's going on with these droids. Sir, I don't know. It's like their behavior cores are undergoing binary decay, but I can't find the source. This shouldn't be happening. Well, that's reassuring. It isn't happening. So the next time we nearly have a breach in the ventilation tunnels, I can just close my eyes and pretend it's my imagination. You better give me some answers. I want to know the damage these droids can do if they start mining us instead of asteroid rock. Sir, these droids aren't combat models. Their mining lasers are weaker and less accurate than blasters. I doubt those droids could even hit one of us. Are you blind? What about the miners in Medbay? It's sabotage, and it started right after the commander said we weren't going to sell the Jedi to the Exchange. So I want you to find out how these droids are being sabotaged. That'll tell me who's trying to clear a path to get that Jedi off the facility and stop him. In the meantime, make sure the security's armed with all the ion and sonic charges you can find. If those droids start coming after me, I'm gonna need more than low-grade mining lasers to take them down. Clear? Yes, sir. Maintenance control out. Idiot. Finish the sonic imprint sensor prototype for the mining droids. Everyone knows they need an upgrade. The sensor should allow me to issue voice commands to them rather than manually adjusting their routine each time the mining specifications change. I've been keeping the sensor in the maintenance workshop for the time being. I wanted to test it first by recording and playing back some simple voice commands. Finish my examination of the droids from the Ebonhawk freighter. The T3 unit looked like it had shut itself down. The protocol droid, however, made up for it. It talked my ear off for most of the hour, asking questions about the facility, the personnel, and so on. Still, it wanted to make itself useful, so I put it to work until its master wakes up from the med bay. It seems to have some skills in speaking to droid behavior cores, so... There's been some trouble with some of the mining droids, so I'm signing off. Been speaking to the protocol droid about the Jedi in med bay? I thought they'd all gone away or been killed in the Jedi Civil War. The droid told me that his master is the only Jedi he knows of in all the galaxy, and that the Jedi had served in the Mandalorian Wars almost ten years ago. That would have meant that the Jedi served under Revan for a time. Maybe the Jedi knows what happened to Revan after the end of the Jedi Civil War. I've been too busy to enter a log for a while. There's been more and more accidents since that Jedi arrived. The miners are starting to get restless, especially Korda. Korda said the Exchange is offering a huge bounty on Jedi Knights and that we can make a fortune if we sell the Jedi to Nar Shaddaa. Security shot down that idea pretty quick, but I don't think Korda and his men are gonna give up that easy. I mentioned the trouble to the Jedi's protocol droid, and he seemed concerned about his master's safety. I told the droid not to worry, the Korda wouldn't. When the dock officer reported the droids repairing the Ebonhawk, 
I installed a voice print ID on the droid console system. Someone ordered them to repair that freighter. But I can't find a trace of the order anywhere. If anyone tries that again, they won't be able to do it from this terminal unless I let them. The voice print should cut any user off from the central functions unless I get the code. The maintenance check on the droids didn't help. If anything, the accidents have increased. Security interrogated me about the droids and they weren't too happy with my answers. I understand it though. These aren't combat models. They shouldn't even know how to attack. I can't help but think, what if somebody staged the initial trouble with the mining droids just to get them all sent to maintenance and then did something to them? I think security's right. Someone's trying to sabotage this facility and they're using the droids to do it. But why? Pleasure to see you intact, Master. How may I be of assistance? Recitation? Oh, yes, Master. The record of his last moments were... Five droids, burning through the outer door. They're, they're forcing their way into the bay. Please, someone... They... Oh, oh, no, they're, they're through! Oh, my leg! They're burning through my leg! Oh, stop! Stop, please! Addendum. His remaining attempts at communication are variations in Decibel Master, ranging from frenzied screams to gibbering inarticulate attempts to beg for his life. Thank you. 
That's about time. I lost your signal after you left the mining tunnels. Now you're coming in clear. Except I'm picking you up on the exterior of the facility. On the asteroid's surface. That can't be right. Huh? What are you doing out there? You're crazy, even for a Jedi. Look, you need to get out of there, quick. What little is left of the facility's venting systems have gone active, most likely from the explosions in the mining tunnels. They're venting Paragus fuel deposits into space through the exterior vents, right in your path. That's just it. They're not supposed to be active when the airlock's opened, and not without the safety measures kicking in. The vents look like they've been purposely rerouted to vent the gases to the exterior. And only in the last few minutes, it's almost as if... Now what now? I don't believe this. There's a ship coming in, sending a docking code. I have a bad feeling about this.
after the facility suffered the explosion that triggered the emergency lockdown. Just finished helping the dock officer set up the transmission relay. Not much signal strength, but it's better than nothing. The transmission gives the code to open the turbo lift when or if help arrives. Code is a simple group of five numbers. Three, 17, 13, then the next two numbers are- Sir, couldn't we contact the med bay? Maybe the Jedi's awake. If so, she could help us. No good. The link to the medical computer was severed from the hub, just like the administration console. Even if the Jedi wakes up, how would we get the dormitory turbo lift code to her? Without it, the turbo lift to the administration level is locked down. We just took an inventory of our supplies. We've got enough emergency rations in the dormitories to last almost a month. But with all the problems in the facility, I don't know how long we'll last. I wish we could contact the Jedi. Maybe she could... No. She's still floating in that damn tank. Someone's played us for fools. And since Corda and his crew aren't locked in here with us, it's pretty clear who it was. If I ever catch up with that Mandalorian loving son of a... At least the air scrubbers are still working, even though they're tied into the... Hey, what's happening to the ventilation system? It's... Nama trade sobre barato drun. Crisis me true grave avano flanc tur na saganinch. Grave ave no ku se tabate bate. Drawin sto so potuto nel lip grem patata. Drawin sto busuto nel lip grapa dala. Tele ronda na na din tolo grade tira. Der winter runto wa kebre ko e wa patar tana chinga radana. Fera rampada no de bring tada nel kemara chela fibor no bodat. Dosane karamala durin se dana mel rebe chin chin kranak tada. Relibe kuronto so mele grim grim kon kore gim basa. Rechu kontrada sumo kon chere non grum grum. Gaya rakta na cemen sebenga ruru kutoto unde cucu ruru ramanansa. Gaya rintu runtu wakwere kwe wapa tera tana cinga rada na. Fera rampada nu dapring tada nil kemera cila fibor nu botot. Dosenek karamalak blue rinci dina ramel rebe rebe cincin kranda tada. Manama tre to sobre barak to drun. Krisi mentru gre bawa no flang turu na saga ninch. Grava we no ku se tabate bate. Tarawin sto so botuto nelip kren patada. Tarawin sto busuto nelip kren patada. Tere ronda nana nintu lu grade tira. Dear winter run to walk away quay wapa teratana chinga radana. Fera rampada no the ring tada nil camera chella fibor no botot. Dosene caramalak blue rinci dena ramel rebe chinchin cranak tada. Fera to rampada no rinca nil commerce chella fibor no lot. Turu kawakere papanala ran chinga. Totorere semisensen. In the session tranda unlon trus nana what is ash? Manama tre to sober barakto drun. Crisi mentru gre bava no flang turu na saga ninch. Grava we no ku se tabate bate. Tarawin sto so botuto nel liep grem patata. Tarawin sto busuto nel liep grapa tala. Tere ronda nana din tolu grade tira. Der rintu runtu wakewere kwe wapa tera tana chinga rada na. Fera rampada no da bring tada nil kemera chela fibor no botot. Dosene karamalak blu rinci dena ramel rebe vi chinchin kranak tada. Fera to rampada no rinca nil komras chela fibor no lo. Turu kawere kere papanala ran chinga. Toto rere seni sensen. In the session tranda unlon trus nana what is ash? On a June, Sandy Sensen, Drawicha, Canel Commercial Chella Fibon Lot. Yo, 
your ears always were too big, CN. Come on, if the maintenance officer comes through on the explosions, these dorms are gonna be filling up soon. And shut that damn data pad off and throw it down the refresher. We managed to get to the dormitories. We should be safe here. We've been trying to use the holo transmitter to beam a transmission to the administration level to end the lockdown. But the administration console's been severed from the main hub. Everyone thinks we should try to evacuate on our own as soon as possible. But there's no way to break the dormitory seals from the inside. I'm going to keep sending distress calls in the meantime. We've been trying to find a way to circumvent the lockdown and get to our hangar bay, but so far, no luck. <sighs> the situation's worse than we thought. Even if we get out of here, we can't shut down the fuel depot force fields if a fuel leak was detected. If so, the only way off this asteroid is if a ship docks with us. But the only connection to the docking platform is on the administration level, and we can't get up to the docking bay while we're trapped here. I only hope someone survived the explosion in the mining tunnels. If not, then we're stranded here. Unless our transmission reaches a passing ship, or a Telos freighter. Managed to use the hollow transmitter here as a crude relay to beam short burst transmissions outside the Paragas facility. With any luck, the transmission will carry beyond the asteroid field. We've set the emergency transmission on automatic playback. We're using a simple military flash code to transmit the code to the turbo lifts, so maybe our rescuers can get down to the dormitory when they reach the station. Without those turbo lift codes, our rescuers wouldn't be able to get here from the administration level. And without those codes, we wouldn't be able to get to the administration level if we found a way out on our own. <sighs> the messages are short distress calls only, since we can't get much signal strength. It's pretty weak, so unless a ship is actively searching the area, it might be a long time before a ship picks up the message. After all, who would be scouring frequencies way out here looking for trouble? The transmission gives the code to open the turbo lift when or if help arrives. Code is a simple group of five numbers. Three, 17, 13, then the next two numbers are... didn't make it out of the dormitory section before the lockdown, you Merglack. You're cutting a little close, aren't you? Yes. A regrettable miscalculation on my part. I'm contacting you because I'm picking up a subspace transmission from within that level. Is that your doing? <sighs> no, they... they must be trying to use the old relay system to send an emergency signal. I doubt they know what's really going on. Hey, this turbo lift's locked down. Try the code again, and don't worry about the miners and their transmission. By the time help arrives, we'll be all the way to Nar Shada. Oh, they won't be leaving the dormitories. The explosion within the tunnel has damaged the ventilation systems, causing breaches in the core exhaust conduits. What? That's going to kill them all! Not all of them, but I'm sending a number of mining droids to your location right now to correct that problem. Kurda, this turbo lift's locked down. The sequence isn't working. Keep trying it! You! 
Why are you doing this? Why me? You. It was never about you. The Jedi is all that interests me. But then you had to ruin everything by revealing her identity and then trying to harm her. And that I cannot allow. Statement. You are a risk, Corda. You are impulsive, crude, and soon deceased. Query. Corta, Corta, are you dead yet? Smug statement. I believe I forgot to mention that I reversed the Turbolift codes. In case you managed to get this far. What did you want to talk to me about? I have to suit up and drill the 3219K asteroid claim within the hour, so talk quick. I heard you had plans for the Jedi, about selling her to the Exchange. Yeah, but security already set their piece on that, didn't they? Nobody's getting sold to anyone. Are they? I've seen the logs you've been accessing. Maybe the two of us could work something out. It doesn't matter what we work out. We wouldn't make one hyperspace jump before what's left of the Republic was on us. If you have a way off this station, I can cover our tracks, and ensure the Republic is not alerted to our presence. Well, I may know someone. Works this system on special jobs. He may want to know details, but I might be able to arrange transport. I've seen the logs. I know you've already asked him and given the details. Once he agrees, I can handle the rest. Handle the rest? Like how? When the time comes, I'll contact you via comlink. Maintenance out. Since when did the maintenance officer grow some horns? Emergency lockdown over. I have felt a disturbance. Our enemy is here. We must leave at once. The one that fired upon the Ebon Hawk as we attempted to rescue you. And he will not let us go without blood being shed. The story is a long one, and time is short. Come, we must go, and quickly. We need to make our way to the docking area on this level. I fear the airlock has already opened, and if so, we must be on our guard. If we cannot reach the Ebon Hawk, then we must find a way to escape on the ship that has docked here. What in space is going on? Who's this? Another Jedi? What, did you guys suddenly start breeding when I wasn't looking? Uh, alright. I'm guessing that Republic ship that just docked isn't carrying friends of yours. I hope your talent for understatement is offset by your skill with a blaster. If not, then I fear our time together will be short indeed. Yeah, and I'm also good at running and drinking, Your Majesty. And even if you two aren't big friends of the Republic, that warship's the only way off this station. Good thing we have a clear run to the ship. Threat. Master, perhaps I did not enunciate clearly the last time we spoke. I suggested that you should shut down, stay put, and wait for rescue. Correction. I am not here to argue semantics, Master, so I will simply inform you that you are wrong, as were those recently corrected miners. Indignant answer. Master, the miners intended to place you in jeopardy. I could not allow that to take place, so I was forced to negotiate a termination of hostilities. After reprogramming the mining droids to mine any organics they perceived, they began to kill the miners one by one. 
Then a series of flawlessly timed explosions drove the miners into their dormitories, where I was able to gas them all at once without wasting time hunting them through the mining tunnels. I then administered a large dose of sedatives to the remaining miners in the med bay, enough to kill them, but ensure you slept peacefully. Of course, against my calculations, you awaken from your tank prematurely. I am ashamed by the inconvenience that caused for both of us. Answer? You misunderstand me, Master. Those droids were there to guard you. As I said, I did not anticipate you awakening from the tank. You are quite a hardy specimen for a Jedi, a Ronto among humans, if you will indulge me the metaphor. Besides, as you proved, Master, such droids could never pose a threat to a Jedi. The droids were custodial in nature, cleaning the facility of other distractions. Answer. It is beyond the scope of my programming to probe the motivations of my clients, Master. Suffice to say that I am being well compensated for my services. You have been a difficult target to find. You have been wandering the galaxy since the end of the Mandalorian Wars, leaving little record of your passage. It is as if you did not wish to be found by hunters such as myself, or more likely, the Jedi Order. Admission. It was a matter of chance, Master. I happened to be serving as a protocol droid on the Harbinger when you booked passage. After that, it was a simple matter to sabotage the Harbinger and call for a retrieval. Irritated statement. However, when the Ebon Hawk appeared and salvaged us from the wreckage, I was forced into a series of rapid recalculations, culminating in our current situation. Chiding answer. My programming renders me incapable of revealing the identity of my client, Master. However, I am free to say that my client is wealthy and very interested in possessing the last of the Jedi. Admission. It was a matter of chance, Master. Irritated statement. Answer. No, Master. Killing you was never the intention. If you resist my attempts to return you to your Kalto tank, however, I may inadvertently fracture your skeleton in several places to incapacitate you. Resignation. Very well, Master. If inflicting pain is the only means to resolve this matter, then you leave me no choice. I hear... Time to take you down to size. 